of the Bible and the things that they overcome through their faith. And Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. It's something that we're reaching for. It's something that we're hoping for. It's something that we know one day we're going to achieve, but we can't see it until so we And sometimes it's hard to see. Sometimes the things that we go through in our life, sometimes Brother Billy, the things that we face in life and the things that we endure, sometimes our faith grows weak. But I'm going to pray this morning that our faith is strong. <laughs> I want all of us to pray this morning that our faith is strong because Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us, but without faith... It is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I want us to pray this morning as we open up that our faith increases. Lord, help our faith increase. I don't understand what I'm going through right now. I don't know what I'm facing right now. I don't know why I have to go through what I'm going now, but I've got faith. I said, I've got the faith in you that everything's going to be all right. I got the faith in you that everything's going to be all right in the end, that all things are going to work out. All things work for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose, according to the power that worketh to you. And that power is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That power is the Holy Ghost. Can we pray this morning, Lord, and Christ our faith? God, I love you this morning, God. I'm so thankful, Lord, for your blessings, son. I'm so thankful for your goodness, Lord. I ask you, God, to increase my faith, Lord. When I don't understand what's going on, Lord, when I can't see what's happening, God, when I don't know what's going to take place the next day, God, I know that you're in control, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to increase my faith, Lord. Increase my faith this morning, God. And you, Lord, because I know, God, you saw my faith, Lord. You're in control, Lord, and you love us. You gave your life for us, Lord, because you love us. And I'm praying, God, to increase our faith in this place this morning. Increase our faith in you this morning, God. I'm praying, Lord, in Jesus' name. Just give me my hand out for praise this morning.
He is a God that sits on His throne wanting to do so much for His people. Think about the blessings in your life. What has He given you? And today at this time, we're going to see what kind of blessings we can be. What can we give back to the kingdom of God this day? We're going to take up the offering today or receive it rather than for whoever the gold colored pans or for tithing, the wood grain pans or for offering. And as always, there are several ways to give cash or check, give the five, PayPal, regular mail at the Riverbend Pentecostals at P.O. Box 477, City Matter, Missouri, 63869. Or you can call and pick it up or drop it in the pastor's mailbox, however you feel to give. It is up to you, but please do. But we can pray today. Upon the authority of your word, I have given. And it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. Now bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. Now live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, Interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. Bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family is saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would, come and bring your offering and your gifts to the
extended in this world right now. There's a lot of things going on that we don't like. A lot of things going on we don't agree with that we wish were different. But we serve a God that can change everything. We just said it. Jesus, you can change everything. Jesus, you can do it. You can do all that you want to, Lord, because you have the power. You have the dominion. You have the authority to make things change with just a snap of your fingers or with the breath that comes out of your mouth. You can do whatever you want to. I had a man ask me a question the other day. He said, whose report will you believe? We laugh about it. Some of us chuckle about it. But whose report will you believe? Whenever you're getting phone calls that are all doom and gloom, whenever you're getting text messages that say people are getting worse, whenever you're getting all this information coming at you, when the enemy's coming against you, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe those things that are being made up by the enemy, that are being made up to crush you and to bring you down? Or are you going to believe the report of the one that came to you? Brother Larry's going to 
bring us a message today. God, I pray today, Lord, that you would just have your way in this congregation. Lord, I pray that this word is anointed. I know that it already is because it came from you, God, but I pray that you would anoint his lips. Lord, I pray that you would just anoint our hearts and our ears to receive it today, Lord. I pray today that somebody today is going to take this word and apply it to their life. They're going to take this word and use it to go forward in the faith, God. We all just lift our hands and give him praise and honor of the Lord. Come on, everybody. Open your mouth and just thank him and praise him in this place this morning. God, I magnify you, O Lord. I praise you, King of kings and Lord of lords. There is none like you, Lord Jesus, and we magnify you in this place. We thank you, God, for your spirit that's in this place right now. God, in faith believing, O oh Lord, that every need that was mentioned in this place, you took care of it, God, and we give you honor for it. We praise you and we glorify your name, for you are worthy, O oh Lord. And we thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. One time. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the house this morning. I shared a thing on Facebook yesterday. Some of you might have seen it, but kind of caught me off guard. It's nothing to do with my message. A man was ministering, Brother Blake, and he said that in the middle of the service, people were, were worshiping, and he opened his eyes for just a moment. He said that the only people that he saw worshiping was like three people. And he said every one of them was in a wheelchair. He said, one man was strapped with seatbelts, paraplegic, in a wheelchair. He said, his body just racked with pain and just moving all over the place. He said, but I've seen the man praising God. And Brother David, he said, I've seen him take that mangled hand down and undo the seatbelt. And then he undone the other seatbelt. And then he went down flat of his face and he crawled from the front to the altar. Crawled to the altar. And he said when he got to the altar, the man that was watching him said, I, Brother Billy, there's no way I could sit and watch this guy do that when I got two good legs. He said, so I crawled up there right beside him because I had to know what somebody that desperate had to say to the Lord. And he said, through his broken voice, I heard God you have been so good to me. And when I watched that yesterday, Brother Richard, something smoked me. I've got two good legs. I've got a voice. I've got two good hands. Yeah, there's some aches and some pains. But Brother Billy, God has been way too good to me for me to sit in this place and just sit like a stone and not give him praise. Not give him honor. And not He is worthy of my faith. And it is His breath in my lungs. And I give Him honor today. Amen. Amen. One more time, let's give Him a hand clap of praise. And thank you for what you We love you, God. We magnify you, oh Lord. You've been good to us. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to Genesis chapter 11. We're going to go through verse 1 through verse 9. And it goes a little something like this. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to and let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to and let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make us a name. Let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And he said, Behold, 
the people is one. And they all have one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to. Let us go down and therefore confound their language that they might not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the whole earth. And they left off to build the city. Therefore the name of it is called Babylon. Because the Lord did confound the language of all of the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. I want you to pay particular attention to verse 9. It said it was called Babel because the Lord did confound the language of the whole earth. See, when I was a little boy, I thought about this tower. I know many of you that sit here had those little felt boards where they put the little men and the little women up on the board and you could see and they had act out stuff and they had diagrams and pictures for, for the mind's sake so you could understand what they were talking about. And I, I always imagined this tower that went way up into space and they could see everything from up there. But, but more than likely, as I begin to study that the truth of the matter is this building was more like a cigarette. And, and many of you would, would know what they are. They're, they begin to look like this and they would build them up and taller and taller till they reached a pinnacle like a pyramid. And those places were often places where people would gather and they would worship. People would gather and they would praise. That, that's what they became later. They, they would worship the creation more than the creator. And this, quite possibly, the tower that the children of Noah built was quite possibly the first one ever created, Brother Richard. Later on, they become, as I said a while ago, places for astrology, places for occult practices, places to worship. They, they reached those places of height because they believed the higher that they got, the closer to the gods they became. You can read in the Bible many, many times. And, and there was many kings that they would build altars and pagan gods. And, and Asher poles, they would build them in the plains, Brother David. But then they would go up to the high places. Many kings would, would begin to follow the Lord again. And they would tear down the things that are in the plains. The things that were easily accessible. But they would leave the high places, the Bible said. The places that was hard to reach. Sometimes there's things in our life that's easily accessible that we try to take away. But there are times in our life when we need to get to a place where we start digging and asking God, God, is there something else that I need to take away that is unlike you? Is there things in my life that I need to get out of the way that I can be more like you? Because God, ultimately, I want your will for my life. You see, these descendants of Noah, they made up their minds that they would build this tower. They were going to stay in this area of the city. They would bind together and they would build this city. And they understood that as an organized group, they could accomplish anything. The Bible says that the Lord saw this and that they would have accomplished their goal. Quite possibly, could have been with a little liberty here, it could have been the fear of another flood that, that, that made them want to build something tall and towering to hide themselves. No telling what it was, but historians even suggest that, that man created this tower to protect themselves, to hide themselves, to bind themselves together. Whatever the reason was for them to begin to build a city and tower, God saw it differently. God, as we just read in the story, used the tongue in the time of the Tower of Babel to bring separation. He used the tongue to separate people. He used the tongue as a barrier of humanity, a sign of disunity that scattered the nations. I never really thought about this, Brother David, but as I begin to study for this, I begin to realize that, you know, it wasn't just certain people that was changed. It could have quite possibly been a mom and dad walking down the street. They could have been dragging a rock to put on the tower. They could have been carrying mortar. Men and women, aunts and uncles, cousins, friends, boyfriend and girlfriend, soon to be newlyweds, whoever, walking hand in hand, communicating about how they were going to build this tower to bring them glory. Then all of a sudden, they couldn't understand each other no more. Disunity began to happen. They become angry because they couldn't get their point across. They no longer understood and they could no longer communicate. Their goals and their purposes now became vastly different. 
through different tongues and dialects, man was no longer able to accomplish his purpose. He was then scattered upon the whole earth. The tongue, the tongue changed the situation. The tongue changed the aspect and the purpose that the man had. The tongue led to inward and outward changes. You see, the way that we communicate is not the way other cultures in the world communicate, Brother Richard. The way that we think and how we put our senses together ain't necessarily how other people put sentences together. We read left to right. A lot of them read right to left, up and down, backwards. We don't communicate the same. God changed the inward part and He changed the outward part. The tongue changed man's communication. But, but is a conjunction that is used to introduce a phrase or a clause contrasting with what has already been mentioned. But, Acts 2, 1 through 4, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Remember, I said God was a conjunction. And it's used to introduce a phrase or a clause contrasting what has already been mentioned. The contrast is God used the tongue to bring disunity at the Tower of Babel because man sought to use the tongue for his own purpose. But God also flipped the script and he used the tongue to bring unity on the day of Pentecost to accomplish his purpose. When we are in His purpose, Brother Blake, we're going to do what God would have us to do. When we are in His purpose, we will accomplish what He has set out for us to accomplish. It was a reversal of the curse. And it was given to spread the gospel to let the world know that Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. There is no other way. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It is the saving name of Jesus. And all power in heaven and earth belong to that name. It's not my ability. It's not my talent. It's not my dream. And it's not my desire that gives me the ability to accomplish my purpose. But rather it is the anointing power of the Holy Ghost. And the leadership of Almighty God that allows me to accomplish what He has set before me in my life. Amen. Amen. Come on, open your mouth and just pray to the Lord for a moment. Jesus Christ is the answer for the world today. Can you say that with me? Jesus Christ is the answer for the world today. James 3 and 8 says, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Brother David, we've heard it many, many times. That's the reason God chose speaking in tongues as the initial sign of the Holy Ghost. It's this deadly poison. We can't tame it. We want to. But sometimes things begin to bubble up. And if we ain't thinking right, it just comes out. But you see, when we allow the Holy Ghost to govern our life, we can put a guard on that tongue because He leads us and He guides us. He directs us. This lets us know and those around us know that we have relinquished all rights to ourselves. That at the moment we're speaking in tongues as He gives the others, we are allowing God full control over our lives. On the day of Pentecost, we read it. The Bible says that all, every one of them, received the Holy Ghost. And every one of them spoke with other tongues. Now one or two, Brother Richard. But everybody that was in the house that morning, everybody that joined together in unity, everybody that came to church with a purpose, they all spoke with tongues and the Spirit of God gave them utterance. You see, it is the power of the Holy Ghost that has changed the situation. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, God has brought all believers who have received His Spirit, Brother Walter, back into unity. Back into unity with one another. The tongue used to change us. The tongue scattered us. We were a people scattered. Now we're a people united. It's not our power. It's not our ability. But it's the power of Almighty God. I remember, brother, I believe it was a... 
Oh, I can't remember his name. He's from Louisiana, but he was preaching in Papua New Guinea. I showed Sister Callie here not too long ago. He was in a huge stadium. Thousands upon thousands of people, brother. Really thousands. And he was preaching. And he wasn't preaching like we preach. He'd preach a little bit, say a few words, and he'd stop. And then somebody would interpret it. Why? Because they didn't understand the tongue. Had to have somebody there. He'd say a few words, they'd interpret it. Say a few more words, they'd interpret it. But I'm going to tell you right now. When he spoke, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And that whole crowd, thousands, began to raise their hand in repentance and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Something happened. I didn't know what they were saying. But something in me began to boil. The hairs on my arm began to stand up. I knew at that moment that we had something in common, Brother Blake. I don't understand your language, and you don't understand mine. But it's the power of God in us that changes the situation. I don't have to know your situation. I don't have to know your circumstance. But I do know there is a God that can change every part of your life if you allow Him to. The unity under the leadership of the Spirit of God allows believers to accomplish things that they can no longer accomplish on their own. The curse is broken through the unity of obedience to the Word of God. What saves and unifies us, it ain't speaking in tongues. But it's the power of God that's working in us when we're speaking in tongues. When we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Brother Blake, something happens when I see my brother getting a blessing. I begin to want to get a blessing. But when I see my sister that I know has been going through a terrible time. And we go over there and begin to pray together. And I can feel something from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Because I know that God is blessing her. And I understand at that moment that together we are being blessed by the Spirit of Almighty God. We understand that Peter stood with the eleven, the other disciples, and he gave the plan of salvation on Acts 2 and 38, and all twelve of them were in agreement, Brother Richard. They all understood and heard Jesus preaching, and Jesus told Peter, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom, and on the day of Pentecost, he used those keys. He opened his mouth and he told the plan of salvation exactly what should be done. And when he preached with anointing, people received that. He told them that you have to die out. You've got to die out. And that, that is repentance. We die to our sins. He let them know that you've got to be buried in that wonderful saving name of Jesus Christ. And he let them know that they would become new creatures with the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And that's going to be the resurrection. Because the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord dwells in us. He's going to quicken our mortal bodies and we're going to be raised. Amen. We're going to be out of this place when the trumpet sounds. And I thank God for that. You see people ask us all the time, well, is that really vital? Do, do we really have to do that? Well, I'm here to tell you today, yes, it's vital. We have to do that. It's the Spirit of God. We cannot do this on our own accord. Brother Walter, it ain't me. I can't do it by myself. I don't have the ability to do anything. But when the Spirit of God begins to move in me, when the Spirit of God begins to move in you, it's something that changes us and makes us into what He would have us to be. Every account that we're given in the Bible by the disciples, the ones who walk with Him, the ones who talk with Him on a daily basis, every single account tells of what we need to do. They understood that Jesus had taught them. They understood what He was teaching them. They understood and they saw. And signs followed them. And signs proved that what, what was happening, Brother Blake, was true. Acts chapter 2. We read where the Jews received the gift of the Holy Ghost. They were baptized in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 8, we receive where the Samaritans received the Holy Ghost and they were baptized in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 10, we see where the Gentiles and Cornelius received the Holy Ghost and his whole family and they were baptized in Jesus' name. Acts 19, we read the disciples of John where they received the Holy Ghost and were baptized in Jesus' name. And Acts chapter 22, Paul himself begins to give an account of his experience in receiving the Holy Ghost and how the Lord changed him. You see, it is not us, but it is the Spirit of God in us that changes us. Right. Deuteronomy 12 and 5 in the New Living Translation says, Rather, you must seek the Lord your God at the place of worship 
he himself will choose from among the tribes. The place where his name will be honored. You see this building? Blood, sweat, and tears. But Billy, from a lot of people went into this building. I'm sure there was a thumbnail busted a time or two, an old hammer slip. There was some busting went on as, as maybe they put something in there that didn't look quite right. They had to change it. Things were, were different. They put this together with their hands. And that's the place where we come to worship the Lord. But Acts 7 and 8 said, How be it that the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. If we're coming into this place, Brother Walter, thank you. If he's standing right here waiting on us to walk through that door, we got something wrong with us. Because this is a building for us. This is a place for us to come together in the bond of peace and worship the one that we've been toting around in our souls and our hearts all week, Brother Shannon. We walk into this place and we battle some things. But we've got to come into this sanctuary with a made up mind that I'm walking into a building. But I'm bringing something with me that's going to change somebody's life. I'm walking into a situation. But I'm bringing something with me that's going to change somebody's mind. And I'm coming in to worship Him. Amen. I'm coming in because God has been way too good to me for me to sit back, keep my mouth shut, and not honor Him. And not praise Him. And not magnify Him. I'm here for one reason. And that is the praise. This is the place where we come together. But this is the dwelling place of the Most High. My, my, my. The dwelling place of the Most High. Even the Spirit of Truth, John 14 and 17 says, Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But guess what, y'all? You know him. For he dwelleth in you, or with you, and he shall be in you. In me, Brother David. That means when I wake up in the morning, he's right by my side. When I lay my head at night, he's right by my side. When I go through situations, he's right by my side. When I don't hear him, he's right by my side. When I don't understand him, he's right by my side. When I can not him, he's right by my side. He's there all the time. Come on, open your mouth and magnify it for a minute. Hallelujah. 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 The Shekinah glory of God. One of the coolest things, Brother Gio, who taught that Bible study, and I remember it's kind of cool, Sister Maria, to see that, that view going through the temple and the veil opened up and you see the candlesticks. You go in there and you see the labors and you see the basins and you see all that stuff that we never get to see before. And then the veil opens up into the holiest of holies and there set the Ark of the Covenant. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty neat. That's pretty cool. But you know what was sad? That upon the holies of holies, upon the Ark of the Covenant, sat the mercy seat and the blood of the sacrifice was applied upon that. On the day of atonement, one man, one man, one time in a year, one man, one time, in 365 days, got to step through that veil and feel what we feel in this place right now. One man, one time in a year, got in between that veil where nobody else was, with bells on his feet, he began to dance around, Brother David. He began to praise. He put the blood of sacrifice on that altar, and he worshiped in the presence of Almighty God. But I'm telling you right now that when Jesus Christ hung on the cross, just like separated between earth and heaven, and he gave his life for us, something happened to that veil. Something happened to that veil. The Bible says that the veil was rent. And as that veil was rent, Brother David, mercy was released into this world. Mercy flew out of that place. I can almost hear God cry, let me out of here. Let me go. I've got to get out of here. 
I had a relationship with man one time before, but guess what? It's fixing to happen again to those that desire me, to those that want me, to those that want to understand me. I am going to be there for them. I can almost see him reaching out. I can almost hear him, Brother Blake, crying. I wanted to hold you. I wanted to fix your problem. To be there for you for all of this time. Now here I am. Brother Cody, there ain't nothing like it in the world. There ain't nothing like it in the world to know that you're a knucklehead. To know that you're the chief of sinners, as Paul said. To know that you sin beyond sin like David did. And bow your head before a God that loves you and cry out unto Him and know that every single sin that you created is gone. There's nothing like it in all the world, Brother Richard, to know that there is a God that loved me so much that He gave Himself for me. That the curse that was upon me, that the tongue that separated me from a God that I no longer understood, now when I begin to magnify Him, now when I begin to speak in tongues with my brothers and my sisters, we become one flesh because it is the Spirit of God in us that changes the situation. The curse of sin separated a holy God from a sinful man. But now we are reconciled unto Him by the Spirit that dwells within us. Church, I have a new talk. I have a new walk. My life is forever changed. I am in a covenant relationship with the God of all creation. I am in a covenant relationship. His name has been applied unto me when I was buried in that water. And everything that I've done, yeah, the devil might throw it in my face every once in a while. He might say, yeah, they're just waiting for you to mess up again, Brother Shannon. But I'm here to tell you right now that I know that it's gone. As far as the east is from the west, that there is a relationship between me and God that nobody can take away. Because I am His and He is mine. I am changed and I have a new way of living. I have a new way of talking. And the more I seek Him, Brother Blake, the more I find Him. The more I want to know of Him, the more He's going to be there for me. And I will understand Him. I can have as much of God as I want. I can come into this place. Sunday morning. The fanciest outfit I got, biggest hair I got, the nicest dress, the nicest clothes, and I can walk in here and I can sit and I can leave this place with nothing. Get a couple of glory bumps. Woo, we had church today. But I ain't changed nothing. But I can stop at that door before I enter into this place. It don't matter how my week's been. It don't matter how my day's been. I might have woke up and had four flats. It don't matter. When I get to that door, I say, hold up. Hold up. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know what I'm fixing to do, devil? I'm about to walk into this building because I know i got brothers and sisters in there as well that's been going through stuff too. And I'm about to walk in here with a made up mind that I don't care what nobody else is doing. I'm going to magnify him and I'm going to bless him and I'm going to praise him because he has done way too much for me. He has changed my life. He has made me what he wants me to be. And I want to do my best for him. I want to do my best for Him. I want more of Him every day that I live. I want more of Him every day that I live. I can't even sit in a deer blind without thinking about it. Can you? Can you drive down the road? I don't know about y'all, but the sunsets have been gorgeous these past few months. I don't know if it's a new perspective or what, but they're beautiful. Me and Scarlett was talking about it. I'm like, wow! Where did that come from? How can you look at that and think there ain't no God? Oh, but I know Him. I know Him. The Bible says He sent my sheep. They know my voice. When you sit by yourself, Brother Walter, big old truck mile after mile. Uh-huh. You hit the horn every once in a while. 
You roll by yourself for some time, you feel by yourself. Feel all alone. Guess what? You begin to magnify him. Put something on the radio or you turn the radio off. How do you want to do it? And you say, God, you've been good to me. God, you changed my life. You blessed me. Something gets to happen. I don't care where you are. I don't care where you are. When you open your mouth and begin to praise him, something begins to happen. You begin to feel a little bit. I've been at work and felt it. I've been at home and felt it. I've been at church and I'm feeling it. I've been everywhere and I know that God is where I magnify Him at. When I praise Him, He's right there. When I magnify Him, He's right there. It's whatever I want from Him. I've got to learn to open my mouth and use this tongue that once divided me, but now it's going to be used to magnify Him. Revelations 5 and 9. They sing a new song with these words. You. Jesus Christ. You are worthy to take the scroll and to break the seal and open it. For you were slaughtered. And your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe, every language, every people, and every nation. You know what that means? Every body. You know, when we get to the other side and we open our eyes, oh, 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 oh my, my, my. Can't you feel it right now in this place? He's moving in this place right now. Can't you feel it? Just close your eyes for a moment and just imagine. I think about my, my grandparents and I'm watching them leave this place. It's sad. But I know for the Vulture that they did their best. And according to the word and faith that they made, they might have closed their eyes on this place. But oh, and they opened them again for the day. Something. It's worth it all, Brother Ray. Every trial, every worry, every tear, every doubt, every misunderstanding, it's worth it all. Because you know he's there. And forevermore, I'm going to magnify Him. And hand in hand, arm in arm, with every tribe, every nation, and every tongue, in unison, we're going to magnify Him. We're going to praise Him together. The languages that He confounded, now in one voice, will magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we will bless His name together. We will honor Him together. We will no longer bow by sin. But we are bound together for a common purpose to accomplish the will of God. One more time, let's stand in this place. Open our voices and magnify the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Can we do that in the house this morning? See the county of the Come on, everybody. Find your place to worship Him. Find your place to praise Him. He is worthy of our praise.
Amen. All right, we can all stand. Brother David, why don't you dismiss this day? Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for being out of this place this morning. God, we ask you to go with us, be with us, let us never forget, God. If you be for us, you can be against us. Yeah, I love you. Jesus, maybe we can be Amen. Amen. Amen.